My people have been a slave race for over 10,000 years. Once long ago, Subari were a prosperous people with a rich culture and a complex society. We were just starting to explore our own solar system when the Morosians discovered our planet. They were the first aliens we ever encountered. They were also the first to enslave us. They gave us production quotas and installed overseers to make sure they were met. Everything we had was diverted to fulfilling their demands, and any part of our society that didn't serve the Morosians was left to wither and die. Music, theater, art. Our masters had no use for them, so they became something we only practiced in between shifts in the factories and the mines. The Morosians ruled us for 2,717 years. We marked every day as a day we would one day take vengeance for all the while knowing that this was nothing more than a tradition handed down from the last generation to no freedom. All rebellions had long since been crushed, brutally. We served the Morotsians, and we always would. Until the Akapids came, they defeated the Morotsians, burning their fleets, slaughtering their armies, driving them off world after world. We experienced a brief glimmer of hope, until we realized we had only exchanged one set of masters for another. Worse still, the Akapids were more demanding and less complacent than the Morosians had become. What few freedoms we had left were squeezed ever tighter. The Akapids didn't last long, though, only 500 years or so. They squeezed their slave races a little too hard until they were bone dry and had nothing left to give. The flow of resources for their war machine stopped and their empire collapsed as several other powers took advantage of their weakness to carve off territories for themselves. After the Akapids came the Vervinians, then the Quogi, the Nusovians, the Lycanites, the Jor, and the Demarakians. Then a little over 3,000 years ago, the Kolau took control of our planet, a slug-like race, their bodies so atrophied by eons of reliance on their slaves that they could do almost nothing without them, and all the more dangerous because of it, for no Kolau survived, who was not a prodigy in the arts of cruelty and domination. The Kolau are a species with little compassion for others, even their own kind. They aren't a society so much as a collection of individuals whose interests occasionally aligned with others of their own species. Each one is virtually a king in its own right, with vast territories under its control, whole fleets of ships, and armies of slaves. Some of our former masters had treated us as state property, and some of them had treated us as private property, but none had given such complete power to a single individual. Each one had the absolute right of life and death over tens of thousands of Subari, among many other slave races. And they used it frequently, for what did we mean to them? One dead slave was a barely noticeable loss to the Kolau, or a hundred, or a thousand. We tried our best to keep our culture and our traditions alive. Our masters worked us every waking hour, but we scraped together every spare minute we could find to educate our children in our sciences, our arts, and our history. We knew there were pieces missing. Some of our former masters had not liked the thought of us remembering that we had once been free, and there were long periods when it was very dangerous to teach anything but servitude. But we saved what we could, and we passed on what we had. We clung to the idea that something of the Subar that once was could one day rise again. The Kolau made that very difficult. For although they did not care enough to deliberately suppress our culture, slaves of one master had almost no contact with slaves of any other Kolau. There were only two instances where we might be able to pass on information more widely, when a Kolau cooperated with another Kolau on a project, or when one of them killed another and took their slaves. Neither happened frequently. There was never a single rebellion against the Kolau. Every Subari knew that any sign of defiance, no matter how mild, would result in a horrific, agonizing death. We knew that former masters had fallen to stronger empires, and we awaited the day when the Kolau would suffer that fate. But we did not believe that would give us a chance to take back our freedom. We had tried that before, and failed horribly. We hoped only that one day we would have kinder masters. However, centuries passed, then millennia. There came a generation who realized that the Kolau had been our masters longer than any other race, then more generations after them who saw not the slightest flicker in the Kolau's power. Their ruthlessness and their intelligence were unmatched. Almost every enemy they faced was destroyed, and those that survived only did so because they were fighting just a handful of Kolau. Even one or two could field slave armies to match entire species, but in small numbers 
they could still fall to a determined enemy. Other Kolau often did not feel like coming to their aid if their brethren suffered a reversal of fortune, but when they felt threatened enough to unite all their forces together, they were unbeatable, and we despaired of ever being delivered from their oppression. The three thousandth year of their mastery over us came and went, and it seemed to all Subarai that we would see at least another three millennia beneath their yoke. Then rumors started to spread that some Kolau had suffered a heavy defeat on the edge of the Orion Cygnus arm of the galaxy. The slaves they had left were redistributed amongst whichever Kolau could enforce their claim to them and were integrated into the other slave populations. This handful of survivors brought with them tales of a fearsome new enemy who outmaneuvered and outfought the Kolau at every turn. Apparently a few Kolau had encountered an isolated species with no subject planets of their own, no slave armies to fight for them, and no concept of how brutal the wider galaxy was. This naive species had greeted the Kolau with offers of peaceful and friendly relations, having no idea the danger they were in. All this had caused the Kolau, who made contact, to seriously underestimate what they saw only as a new potential slave race. They had attacked almost without thinking about it. Apparently, the eight Kolau who launched this project never thought for one moment that the target species would be able to put up much resistance without slave armies of their own. After all, what kind of soldier would willingly throw themselves towards the guns of the enemy unless there was a master behind them, holding the proverbial whip? No one would be that insane. Apparently there was a species that insane. They were called humans. The endless ranks of Kolau slave soldiers were no match for the humans' disciplined and highly motivated military forces. No matter what horror the Kolau unleashed on them, they just kept coming. One by one, the eight Kolau had their armies broken and routed, and one by one, they were hunted down. We did not rejoice. The Subari were not classified a military race. Our physiology and our temperament was not considered useful for that purpose, so we were not directly in the line of fire. But we could be sure that if the Kolau faced a major threat, they would press us even harder, wring every last drop of productivity out of us. They had encountered races who could seriously challenge them only a handful of times in the three millennia since they became our masters. We remembered those periods as the hunger years. We hoped that the fighting would end with the defeat of the Kolau, who had originally attacked this new race. The Kolau certainly would not mourn for their fallen kin. Their deaths just meant more slaves and resources for everyone else. Hopefully the humans would realize how lucky they had been and take their victory while they had it. They did not. Instead, they issued a general demand to all Kolau that they relinquish their slaves and evacuate all the planets they had conquered. Now that was insane. The immediate response was war, as the Kolau realized that what had been a minor irritation on the fringes of their realm was a genuine threat to their dominion. Battle fleets clashed across an entire arm of the galaxy. Thousands of ships left smoldering wrecks drifting in the void. We expected the humans to be overrun immediately by sheer numbers, but their forces were so much more effective than the Kolaus that they were able to hold their own against fleets and armies many times their size. We only heard rumors on Subar, stories from a handful of slaves who had been relocated there as the front lines moved forward, but it seemed like Kolau were dying in large numbers. Not just their slaves, but the Kolau themselves. Entire planets had been lost all the masters killed as the humans overran their former domain. Most of the slaves were lost too, the Kolau unable to remove them in time, although whether they were dead or merely under human control wasn't known. It never occurred to us that the Kolau might actually lose. We only thought about the conflict in terms of how much we would suffer before our masters finally triumphed. The Kolau, of course, kept issuing proclamations, celebrating their glorious victories over the pathetic human forces. Resistance against the rightful rule of the Kolau was waning in the face of catastrophic human casualties, and it was only a matter of time before they realized the hopelessness of their position and submitted themselves to slavery just to save what little they had left. And yet, more and more slaves turned up on Subar, along with masters desperate to buy protection from the Kolau resident here. The military races charged with keeping us in line began to seem less and less confident. Rumors spread that the humans had crushed every attack launched against them, 
and were advancing rapidly through previously securely held territories, killing every Kolau who tried to stand against them. The refugees kept coming, and the rumors mounted. We knew so little, and yet everything we could glean suggested that the impossible was happening. The Kolau were throwing everything they had at the humans, all of them united together for the first time in millennia. And they, we still losing. Finally, we began to accept the reality of what was happening, and we began to fear. What if this was a race even more terrible than the Kolau? Who else but an even more ruthless and brutal species could defeat our masters? We already knew that they did not use slave soldiers. What if they had no use for us? What if they simply exterminated us? The front lines crept closer and closer to us, until finally the war was on our doorstep. There had been roughly 10,000 Kolau on Subar before the war, ruling over a population of around 9 billion, 98% of which was native Subari, with the remainder being slave soldiers and a few specialists from other species. By the time the human fleet reached us, the population of Kolau had swelled to 20,000. Most of them had only been able to bring a fraction of their slaves along with them. But still, there were almost 200 million slave soldiers ready to defend the planet. We did not expect the humans to win, and if they did, we did not expect to survive. Whatever happened, it seemed certain that the sheer scale of the battle would lay waste to our homeworld. We gathered together, able to do so because our master's attention was fully fixed on the battle ahead. And in that moment of calm before the storm, we were free for the first time in our lives. We said our goodbyes, and we promised that if anyone survived, and we were lucky enough to be among them, we would carry on the memory of the Subari. Then we waited, with fear, but with the serenity of knowing that at least there was no slavery and death. The few Subari servants allowed into the presence of the masters passed on the progress of the battle to others, who spread it across the planet. We listened to the reports with bated breath as the human fleet approached the planet, then began to engage the vanguard of the Kolau's forces. We listened, and we waited. And as each new report came through, we struggled to make sense of what we were hearing. The humans were fighting the vanguard, but they were also already on the ground. From some parts of Subar, you could see weapons fire from ships in low orbit, but other parts were reporting that heavily armed suits of power armor were cutting down slave soldiers by the hundred. Finally, we started to make some sense of what was happening. Instead of engaging the entirety of the defending battle line, spearheads of the attacking force had punched through at key points, and the humans were hammering the greatest concentrations of Kolau on the planet, the nerve centers of the defense. One by one, the most heavily fortified areas were penetrated, and the Kolau sheltering inside them massacred. And as the masters fell, more and more sections of the defending forces were thrown into disarray. The Kolau never left plans for their slave armies to act on in the event of their deaths. What would be the point? As far as an individual Kolau was concerned, if they were dead, then the, the battle had already been lost. A few survivors tried to assert command over the forces that had become leaderless, but they were giving conflicting orders and without a clear chain of command, many units surrendered, rather than continue fighting. The holes in the defensive line around the planet became great, gaping chasms. More and more of the command centers were stormed and purged, and the cascade disintegration of the slave armies accelerated. The point came when even slave soldiers whose masters were still alive were surrendering, knowing that any Kolau who were still alive wouldn't be for long. I watched, looking up at the night sky, as the weapons fire flashing in the darkness slowed, then stopped entirely. The battle had ended. The humans had won. The demand for surrender was broadcast across the whole planet. Notably, although it listed every slave race on the planet who were expected to lay down their weapons, it didn't mention the Kolau themselves. If there were any still alive, for the first time in their immeasurably long and cruel lives, they would have to face the humans themselves without their slaves. We gave our surrender gladly, simply relieved that we were not going to be exterminated. The news spread across the planet quickly, and we all agreed that we should greet the conquering forces with a gesture to prove that we were worth keeping alive as slaves. The humans gave coordinates where their occupation forces would land. Our delegations met them with tentacles raised in submission, bearing the slave collars the Kolau made us wear to present to our new masters. 
The humans did the one thing we did not expect. They welcomed our delegations, but they refused. We did not come to replace your masters, they said. We came to end them, and end slavery with them. My people have been a slave race for over 10,000 years, and for over 10,000 years we waited for the day we would be free. Because of the humans, today is that day.